Every time in my life that I've had a healing, it is because I made a choice for self. And it's happened many times. Um, I wanted to share one time with you when I was young. Because it was a big moment for me. It was a big moment for me. I was 28, and I had been working for a company. I was in corporate, and I had been working for a company uh, about five years. And I had been working for the company all day, all night, for five years. They owned me. I was a workaholic. I took great pride in that company. When I started, it was a little small company that taught an aspect of flight training. And over the years, we got government contracts. And now they were flying Lears and NU2s and had bases everywhere. Had a couple bases. And I knew all the pilots and all the mechanics. And I was involved in operations. And I was doing the accounting. And it had been a part of my soul as I watched it grow. And then the company was going public. So we needed some big dudes in there to take us public. And I reported to the president, the founder, the owner. And the big dudes came in and said, you're not going to do that anymore. We're going to take you and we're going to set you aside. And we're going to make you in charge of cash management. And you're going to read all the contracts. And you're going to do the dissecting of the legalese. I was devastated. The reason they did it was because I was in too much of a position of power. I had the boss's ear, and it was not good. So, I went to lunch, and I remember feeling they were taking this child from me, this baby that I had nurtured for five years. I had given it breath and life, and it was my identity. And I remember smoking my cigarette, because I've been smoking for 10 years, and I was two and a half packs a day, and I was a good smoking girl. I got bored with my cigarettes, so I had menthol, I had the Marlboro, I had the Merit. I had them all on my desk, so I could pick which cigarette I wanted for the moment. I was a master smoker. I was a master smoker. I sat at lunch with some of the girls that had been part of the journey with me. And they knew how much this coming meant to me. They knew my heart was breaking. And I remember clearly, and I said, they can do anything they want to. This is not my company. I see it clearly. Took a drag of my cigarette, and I remember the vision of putting my cigarette out. And I said, I've got to get my life back. That vision is so clear in my mind. I never lit up again. I, I never made the decision I was going to quit. I did not make the decision to quit. I made the decision to get my life back. I put out my cigarette, and I took the job they gave me, cash management. God and I are really good at that job, and it was a lot more power than I had before, much to the uh, bosses. Mm -hmm. Dis disappointment. <laughs> but I didn't quit. I stayed for two years. But within nine months, I was pregnant. I had my child. And I started getting on with my life. And the wheels turned. The most important thing that happened out of that moment, from that moment, I began to ask myself, how does this serve me? I don't care how I serve that anymore because it's not mine. How does this serve me? How am I going to live? And when I was on maternity leave, the legalese portion that I'd been working on for a year, they were doing their um, annual report. And you know, they take photos of all the important people and put them in. And of course, I was an important person. They waited, they held the annual report until I gave birth so they could take a picture of my replacement to go in the annual report. I was pregnant. I was you know, full and big, and not, not corporate, not corporate. The entire staff was astounded, and they said, this is going to break Cindy's heart. And when I found out, I said, really? They can do anything they want. It's not my company. And I was so clear. I was so clear. I am choosing to invest my energy in that company because 
It serves me. Because it serves me. And I never took another job after that that did not serve my soul. And I worked. I worked in accounting. I worked in corporate. But I was out at five and home with my child. And I made sure that life served me, my soul. These moments of empowering, when we talk to people who have had dramatic, they, they'll overcome their cancer, they'll overcome a disease in their body. It's always one moment when they decide they're going to live. I'm choosing my life instead of the fear. I'm choosing to stand forth and be instead of to be afraid. When I was looking through my life and teachings, I had written this, uh, you know, we had real challenge to sum things down. This was before the Desert Storm War. We actually, many of you won't remember this, we lived in a period of peace in the early 90s, I think, before Desert Storm. And everything started quaking in the world, and I was concerned. And this is what they said to me. The world's reality is creeping in at the edges of our consciousness, of your consciousness. Remember, it wasn't the world's reality that got you where you are today. And in that moment, I was a minister, working at Interquest, doing healing work with Patrick. No one plucked me up out of corporate and said, here, we're going to make you a minister because you have such a great heart. No one saw me and said, oh, I love you so much. I'm going to put you in school. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, when I told people I'm going to go and study religion, seminary, go into metaphysics, it was, oh, August, what are you doing? You're crazy. How are you going to make it? The world did not put me where I am. It was a choice that put me where I am. And it was spirit that put me where I am. It was God's reality. God opened your heart and mind to your true potential. You lived in God's reality where everything works together for good for those who love God. And they were saying, don't go there. If you want to keep your job going, you keep your energy invested on your feet, on where you are, on what you're doing. I was doing a Reiki the other day with Ben. And um, you know I'm Reiki in a way. And it's just so lovely to feel the energy moving through your body. It just it's, it's so humbling. You, you can't do healing work as a channel and not be totally humbled. And I'm working on Betty, and the Reiki masters are there, and they're flowing through me, and then they said to me, Thank you. We picked you to do this work. Do you know there are not very many people that will let us go through them? And we appreciate that you let us pick you to do this work. Saying yes to our spirits. We don't have to. We don't have to. We can stay invested in everybody's opinion of us. We can stay invested in jobs that don't serve us. We can stay invested in relationships where we cannot find a breath. We cannot find our breath. We can stay there and God loves us. But in those moments when you cross over and you look at your journey, and you see all of the potential that you brought down. And the little nudges, just teeny little nudges, teeny little nudges you ignored. And I will tell you, God did not grab me by the head of the hair and say, quit your corporate job right now, Missy. You're being a minister. It was a journey. And it was a challenging journey. And if I hadn't been all about what's me and my spirit up to, I would still be in the world, instead of trying to create a world. This is the time of the Christing for us all. Everyone in this room has this beautiful innate knowledge within that they are God's child. If all of us follow the urgings of our heart, we would transform the city just by this small number. We could transform the city of Atlanta and perhaps that would catch on, perhaps the world could be transformed, we don't know. But we do know we have responsibility to transform one person. And that's us. <laughs>